God bless you, church. How many are happy to be in the house of God today? Come on. How many are happy to be in the presence of the almighty king of glory? How many are happy to be able to lift your voices and lift your hands and declare the goodness of God in the land of the living? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'm so happy to be here. I just, before we get into the word of God quickly, I want to honor the man and woman that God has called to lead this flock. They are, they are not only your pastors, they are my pastors also. In one way or another, they have covered us with love, uh, covered us with grace, with wisdom. And so I want to honor our pastors today with a strong hand clap. Amen. Our pastors, Tyrone. First Lady Cassandra, we love you, we honor you. Thank you for trusting me, for trusting me with this sacred desk. You can't trust Puerto Ricans, hallelujah. <laughs> They're reckless, hallelujah. But thank you for trusting me today to bring the word of the Lord, amen. And I am not alone as a custom, my beloved wife uh, is with me. We, I was sharing this morning, uh, this April. I uh, will be married 18 years. And I don't know about, you know, those brothers that, oh, my wife, we've been married 18, 20 years. My wife is fine. And I'm so happy. You're, I don't know, you know, I was going to say something, but that Puerto Rican, you know, that Puerto Rican. I don't know if your wife is fine or not, but my wife is fine. And I thank God for her life. I'm going to ask her to stand so the church can greet her. Amen. My, my two children are with me, Jaden, 17. And stand up, puppy, so the church can meet you. And my daughter is back there, Emma. Amen. She's 12. And with me this morning, we have the privilege, or afternoon rather, of having some leaders of our local church. We have our uh, children's church director, uh, Sister Nelisa. Amen. <laughs> Two, two of her three children are with us, Naomi and Josiah. And I'm sure also many may know Sister Gabriela Castellanos, another leader of our church and my daughter in the faith. And we're so happy to be with, before you this afternoon. Amen. Quickly, let's get into the word of the Lord, Genesis chapter 16. Uh, I'm going to draw your attention to verse 7 as you're looking that verse up. I want to also extend our greetings from our local church, the gathering place, where the Lord is doing some amazing and beautiful things. Uh, I believe it's a prophetic uh, time for the church at large, and so we're just honored to be partakers of that. So receive greetings from them and all our leadership there. Amen. And I also want to piggyback on what Pastor was saying earlier, all the people that serve in one way or the other, in whatever capacity you serve, we honor you. We honor you. Somebody say amen. amen. Because vision is only as strong as the people that help fulfill it. Let me say that one more time. Vision is only as strong as the people that help fulfill it. And so we thank God for the visionaries, but we thank God for the people that make the vision a reality. So we bless you. We love you. Continue the good work the Lord has placed in your hands. Amen. Book of Genesis chapter 16, verse 7. When you have it, you can say amen. amen. The word of the Lord reads as follows. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was a spring that is beside the, the road of Shur. And he said, Hagar. He said, Hagar, slave of Sarai. Where, oh man, I love that. I can't even read this without, you know, I love this part. Where have you come from and where are you going? Where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai. She answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. And the angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, you are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. 
You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard your misery. He will be a wild, he will be a wild donkey of a man. That's, that's a good men's huddle uh, verse right there, Pastor. So all these donkeys, come on, somebody, help me. <laughs> yeah, I need to. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility towards all his brothers. Verse 13. She gave his name. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen. Ooh, God help me. The one who sees me. That is why the well was called Beer Lahai Roi. It is still there between Kadesh and Beret. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram gave the name Ishmael to the son she had bore. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore him. Ishmael. I want to speak in the next couple of minutes on the title Journeys, Origins, and Destinies. Why don't you touch three people and tell them you have a journey, you have an origin, and you have a destiny. Come on, touch somebody else. Touch somebody else. You have a journey, you have an origin, and you have a destiny. Give the Lord Almighty hand of praise. Amen. Amen. It's my assignment this afternoon to submit before you that throughout Scripture from Genesis to Revelations, we're going to see a pattern. And practically, the Bible is the collection of journeys. The Bible is the collection of journeys of the life of men. Men seeking to know God and men seeking to know each other. And if you look at Genesis, the Bible begins with the journey of two people, Adam and Eve. If you look at the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, when we get to Revelation, the Bible begins with the journey of two people and it ends with the journey of a called people altogether. And so from Genesis to Revelation, we are seeing the collectives of journeys. I want you to understand this afternoon that Every journey has a beginning and every journey has a destination. Let me say that one more time. Every journey has an, a, a, a beginning, a place of origin, and every journey has a destination. And as I said this morning, my assignment today, hallelujah, is to establish before you, is to argue before you in these next couple of minutes that no matter what the origins are, the origins never dictate the destiny. Let me say that one more time. Origins never dictate the destiny. <laughs> origins are beginning, right? It is the place of commencing. It is the place where God begins to do something or in life things begin to occur. And oftentimes, oftentimes, as people, we get caught up in the beginnings and we get caught up in what happened and we lose focus of what God wants to do and what God is going to do. But today, somebody say with me today, we're going to break the cycles of this dysfunctional origins. But today, say with me today. We're going to break the cycles of origins that plague our memory. And we're going to push beyond origins and enter into divine destiny. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And so as we're looking at, at origins, it is necessary for us to understand that studying origins is absolutely necessary. And as we examine origins, what we need to understand is we don't look at the origins or the place where we started as things to be shameful about. But we use the origins to learn what God is doing and what he has done. 
We use the origins to understand that even though I started in this situation, in this condition, God has been faithful and will remain faithful to bring us into what he called us to do. Are you still with me, church? Some of us this afternoon are struggling with origins. Because within themselves, they have a desire to do more than what they're doing. Some of us have a desire to break into what God has called us to do. Some started this year saying, you know what? I don't want this year to be like every other year before this one. I want to do something different. I want to stand in the call of God. And every time they reach forward to do what God has called them to do, they are bound by the chains of their origins. Well, my mother was an alcoholic and my grandmother was an alcoholic and my great grandmother was an alcoholic and I can't shake these chains loose because my origins are binding me but today oh I feel my help coming hallelujah but today, there is no grandmother or no great-grandmother or even father or mother that's going to stand in the way of what God is going to do. How many are still with me this afternoon? I came to declare over one person this afternoon that no matter what happened in their family line, no matter how many people were violated and raped and mistreated and broken and no matter, no matter how many alcoholics are in the family, how many people are in depression and taking pills, today we're breaking loose from the origins of our past and we're entering into divine destiny with Jesus Christ. I, I wish I had a church this afternoon. Yeah, I came to tell somebody there is no past, there is no lineage, there is no bloodline, there is no curse that's going to stand in the way of what God is going to do in your life in this season. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, I'm coming into my destiny. Oh, I feel my help here. I feel my help here. I know mom was broken, dad was broken, their, their, their marriage was dysfunctional, and, and my family line was dysfunctional. But as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. I feel something changing this afternoon. I feel, I feel change breaking this afternoon. I feel God, I oh, wish I had a church. I feel God doing something different. Oh, I'm coming out of this in the name of Jesus. And so we are looking back to honor what God is doing now, but we are not looking back into shame. We are not looking back in disparity. We are not looking back. Oh, God help me. We are not looking back judgmentally. And this is the problem about journeys. This is the problem about journeys. Journeys are personal. Oh, God. Journeys are personal personal and sometimes we are led by people that want to dictate our journey without understanding our origins l l let me say that a little slower let me let me say that we we we, we want to be led by people that want to tell us what God has in store for, my, for us but they do not know where we come from they don't know the sleepless nights. They don't understand that. They don't know that level of anxiety during COVID. You didn't know what you were going to do or how you were going to pay the rent. They don't know what you went through with your mother and your father and your children and your baby. That not, No, no, nobody's with me. Nobody's with me. They, they have no clue what you have suffered. They have no clue what you endured. And they want to roadmap your destiny. I want you to, I want you to understand. The only one that can roadmap your destiny is... Is the one that saw you from the beginning. This is why the psalmist said, your eyes saw my embryo. This is why the prophet said, from your mother's womb, I know you. I want you to understand that the only one that can tell you where you're going is the one that created you for the road he's going to place you in. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. And so we have to push beyond the opinions and the judgments of other people. 
Turn to your neighbor and say, you don't know what I've been through. Pastor was sharing a little bit about our story. <laughs> a little bit about our journey. And I love it. I love it. I love it. When, listen, Pastor, when God called us, I, you know, <laughs> I'll do anything, God. I, I, don't, I don't know if I pray like that anymore. I, I kind of measure my words. I'm like, Lord, I guess if you need me to do it, I'll do it. But because at the beginning, God said, let's go, let's do this. And you're, you're happy about it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, can, can, I, can I just break this down a little bit? God, God tells his disciples, cross the other, the, the other side. Go ahead and cross. Go, go. I, I'll, I'll meet you there. But, but he, he never, he never talked about no storm. Yeah, that way three. Lord, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to take you to a land that flows milk. But, but you ain't never talk about no giants, about no wars, about no need, about no suffering. Yeah, I'm with me. Yeah, I'm with me. And so God gives us a promise, but he never speaks to us about the process. He gives you the promise because if he gives you the process, you'll never try to get to the promise. And so when the Lord calls us, build me a church, build me, build me, build, build my kingdom. I say, Lord, we'll go to the ends of the world, to the confines of the world, Lord, to the uttermost places. And, uh, uh, Lord, you know, the Lord blesses you, opens a door, and you see the hardship there, and you trust in the Lord. And then he opens another door, and you, you see the hardships there, but you're trusting the Lord. You still with me? Then he opens another door, and you, you see the hardships there, but you're trusting the Lord. You still with me, church? Yeah. What, you're, what you're not understanding and what we're not understanding is that every moment God was equipping us more and more to the task he's given us. Yeah. Oh, somebody help me. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. And so if you would have told me the first day I was going to go through all the things I went through, I probably would have said, Lord, I don't feel the call anymore. <laughs> Lord, I don't know if I could. <laughs> Lord, I mean, I know we got to suffer and all that, but I don't like this suffering gospel. And so he gives it to us in stages because in stages we are edified. In stages we are built up. And now, hallelujah, I look at those baby uh, beginning problems. I said, Lord, I wish I had those problems again. Pastor, you with me? I wish it, I wish it was a thousand dollars we had to pay. I wish, but when it becomes a million dollars, it's like, Lord, help me, help me. But every moment along the journey, God's saying, I'm taking you from origins to destiny. And every moment and every station and every location, God is building you up. Oh, some of you have to go back and look in the mirror and say, thank you, Lord, because I'm not where I want to be, but I'm definitely not where I started. Somebody say yes. So now I got young people that say, I want to be a pastor just like you. I say, well, well, the pay is terrible. <laughs> The Bible says that Hagar was a slave of Abram and Sarai. I love this part. She was, in the narrative of the, of the context, we really, when we look at her being a slave, she's just a slave. She's not important. She's just a slave. In the narrative of the context, until we learn what God is going to do with her, she's just Sarah's slave. As a matter of fact, when the angel calls her, he calls her with that title. Hagar, slave of Sarah. The name Hagar in the Hebrew is a, com a compound name. First is uh, Ha, H-A-W. Second is Gar, Hagar. He means the, the. El o ella, right? In Spanish, there's masculine or feminine. Oh, that's a message right there. Hallelujah. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Don't get me in trouble. I'm, I'm doing good. Hallelujah. The, 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 the second part of her name, Gar, means foreigner or immigrant. 
So Hagar is a slave that's a foreigner or an immigrant. Not only is she a slave, she's the property of somebody else, but she has no, hallelujah, home or, or no, stir, no uh, 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 sturdy or, or foundation where she can call a home. She's a foreigner. She's an immigrant. Oh, I wish I had a church this, this afternoon. And because of the oppression in that place, the Bible says that Hagar, uh, she escaped from the house of her uh, masters, Abram and Sarai. She escapes. She leaves the house. And while she's leaving and running, the angel of the Lord appears to her and says, Hagar, what are you doing, Hagar? Oh, slave of Sarai, slave of Sarah, where have you come from? And where are you going? Now, we have to pause right here. We have to pause right here because God wants to minister uh, something to us this afternoon. Where are you coming from, origins? Where are you going, destinies? Where are you coming from, origenes? De adonde vienes, origins? Where are you coming from? Where are you going, destinos, destinies? Para donde vas? Where do you come from? I'm a slave, I'm running. And let me tell you something. I, I spoke a little bit about this this morning. If we can contextualize the life of Hagar, she is a slave under the covering of her masters. It, it, it just, just implies that as she is leaving that place, she is so fed up with the situation that she would rather die. No resources, no food, no money, no home, no covering. She would rather die than to stay in that location. How many are still with me today? She'd rather die than stay in that same situation, in that same home, in that same house. But I want you to understand that even, oh God, in her frustration and desperation, God had a plan for her life. Whew. You know, the Bible says in the book of Leviticus that he whom the oil has been poured on, talking about the priest, he, those whom the oil has been poured out, they shall not rent their garments. Follow me, church. Follow me. Follow me. They shall not rent their garments. They shall not break their garments. I want you to understand there are some people, there are some people that God will allow to act in desperation. But there are other people who the oil of the Holy Spirit is upon them that God will bring reproach on them when they act in desperation. The Old Testament is telling us if the oil is on you, you better not get into no type of desperation the oil is on you for a reason i wish i had a church in this place and, and please follow the metaphorical uh, symbolism in, in the life of the of the of the priest the bible says whom the oil is set upon he shall not rent his garments i want you to understand that god is looking for a people that are under the Power, the authority and the control of the Holy Spirit that will not enter into desperation that when things get tough and times get hard they will seek the Lord with all their heart with all their mind with all their strength is there a church in this place today turn to three people and say don't get desperate don't get desperate turn to three people and say don't you do it don't you give up. Don't you break down. Oh, I feel my, I feel my help. Some have the luxury, but not you. Some have the luxury, but not you. Some people, some people can stand around and complain all day. But there are other people that God says, shut your mouth. Go into that prayer closet and seek me until things change. Bravo. There are people that can stand idle and just think, Lord, why me? I'm so, I'm suffering. I'm in need. I have this problem. I have this. But there are other people that if you try that mess with God, God says, listen, I want you to understand that the level of our relationship is not based on what you're going through. It's based on who I am. I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider. 
I am Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi. I wish I had a church this afternoon that understood that no matter what you go through, God is faithful. Don't you get desperate now. Don't you get desperate now. Huh. Don't you go losing your mind now. God has given you his spirit. Now, you, you guys calm down because you, Pastor, I'm sorry. I told you I was Pentecostal. Hallelujah. Some of us don't have the luxury of complaining. Some of us just have to wait on the Lord. Some of us just have to keep on praying, keep on believing, keep on crying until something happens. Some of us don't have the luxury of telling God, hallelujah, our complaints. Where are you coming from and where are you going? Origins and destinies. Where are you coming from and where are you going? Origins and destinies. When the angel comes and approaches Hagar, she is perplexed. She is in a place of des desperation. You ever been in a place of desperation? You ever ask God, Lord, when is this going to be over? But I want you to understand, even in the place of frustration and desperation, God has a way of birthing out of frustration. He has a way of birthing out a promise. When the angel says, where do you come from? And then he says, where are you going? He is talking to her about origins and destiny. You can't forget where you came from to get to where you're going. But you can't get to where you're going, living where you came from. Some of us have to release ourselves, who I feel the Holy Spirit. You want a good marriage, but you keep thinking about the problems you had five years ago. You want to raise your children right, but you keep thinking about how you were abused as a child. You want to you want to start a business, but everything that clouds your mind is a, the bad investments you made before this business. You're not with me, Hallelujah. Where you, where are you coming from, girl? I, I'm a, I'm an immigrant. I'm a, I'm a foreigner. I'm a slave. I'm just a, a piece of, a, of of I'm an object. I've been used to just bring a child. I, I, I I'm poor. I don't have enough. I'm I'm not educated. I have no academia. I I can't do this. I can't go. And, and, and then the angel says, "But where are you going now? Where are you going now?" Some of us. Oh, I'm going to say this. I'm going to pass it. You keep me. You check me. Some of us don't need more prayer. So, and the Bible says pray without ceasing. So, so check this out. Some of us don't need no more, no more prayer. No, no, don't, don't. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Don't even pray about it anymore. Some of us don't need prayer. We don't need fasting. We, we, don't, even, we, don't, need, we don't even need a, a, another word, a, another prophecy. What we need is discipline. Mm, you're waiting for somebody to prophesy over you in the service. You, 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 it's almost witchcraft. I wish I had a church. Lord, I need someone to speak to me. Lord, I, God done told you 50,000 times. He said, I will be with you till the end. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Some of us just need the discipline to lean on the promises of God and wait on God until he performs the thing that he started in us. Turn to your neighbor and say discipline. discipline. <laughs> I'm finishing up. I'm wrapping up here. Hagar is pregnant. The angel tells her. The angel speaks to her and says, where are you going? Where are you going, sister? You have... You have a baby inside of you. And she said she named the Lord in that moment. She gave the Lord a name. He is the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. Elroi, the God who sees me. 
I want you to know he was watching you in your origins. I want you to know his eyes were on you when you first began. When you first started the ministry, his eyes were on you. When you were first born, his eyes were on you. Oh, I wish I had a church this afternoon. His eyes have been on you since the moment you came to this earth. And his eyes have not lost focus. They're still upon you. And she named that place the place where the Lord sees us. And I'm finishing here. She is pregnant and the angel speaks to her. She is, she is running away from her master's house. Now this happens a second time. The second time this happens, Sarai is now Sarah. And just like every other Puerto Rican, once she has her portion, she don't need the portion of somebody else. Oh, I feel my help here. I'm going to say this. I, I, I honestly do not, do not care what you might think of me. But I want you to know that everybody in this place is standing on the shoulders of somebody else. You didn't make it by your own. You're not that smart. Hallelujah. You didn't, you didn't do it by yourself. You, you're not that important. Every one of us are standing on the shoulders oh, of somebody else. Or somebody else. I was, I was 12 years old when I heard my father at 5 o'clock in the morning lay greasy hands on me, over me, in my bed and begin to pray, Padre, este muchacho te pertenece a ti. Lord, this young man belongs to you. And I declare over him, y declaro sobre él, that él va a ser un profeta, he shall be a prophet. Él va a ser un hombre de Dios, he will be a man of God. Él va a ser usado para tu gloria, he will be used for your glory all of us are standing on the shoulders of somebody else thank God for the praying mamas thank God for the believing fathers thank God for the pastors that believed that one day you will be everything God said you would be the first time Hagar leaves running the second time Sarah tells Abraham get this girl out of my house the real promise is here. The real promise is here. Just like us. Try to manufacture a move of God. And when God actually does it, we take credit for it. Get this woman out of my house today. And the Bible says it grieved Abraham. But Abraham listened to his wife. Some of us need to listen. Even though it don't make sense. Man's huddle. 2023. She goes out. Now she's in a jam. The first time she was alone, she had a baby inside of her. And the Lord spoke to her directly through an angel. Said, go back. I got you. Don't worry. But the second time, the second time, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord came. And he says, I have heard the cry of the child. The first time she left, God spoke to her origins. The second time she had to leave, God spoke to her promise, her destiny. Today, beloved, today, God speaks to our destiny. Journeys, origins, and destinies. And no matter how your story began, and no matter how dysfunctional it all began, God says it won't end there because your origin doesn't dictate your destiny let us stand at this moment Father I thank you today for reminding us oh God <laughs>
thank you, Lord, for reminding us this is only a chapter. This is only a chapter. Thank you for reminding us that a volume is being written about us. for reminding us that a book is being written about it and this is just a chapter oh church we're going to open this altar I don't want you to wait for nobody I don't want you to look at nobody if you need prayer I want you to run right now to this we have one minute I want you to I want to meet you at this altar if the Lord spoke to you come now come now Come now, come now, come now. This is just a chapter. This is just a chapter. Come now, come, 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 come. Quickly, quickly. Oh. Oh. Today God reminds you. Today God reinforces the idea, hallelujah, that no matter how things began, no matter how they started. I don't know if it's relationships. I don't know if it's marriage. I don't know if it's finances. I don't know if it's ministry. I don't, I can't, I can't pinpoint it. All I know is it does not matter how it began. God is turning things over. He's speaking into our destiny. He's speaking into our destiny. Come on, church. Come on. He's speaking into our, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. He's speaking into our destiny. And we're stepping, come on, come on. We're stepping into 2023. We're stepping into 2023. Come on, come on. We're stepping into destiny. We're stepping into fulfillment. We're stepping into anointing. Come on, church. We're stepping into anointing. We're stepping into restored relationships. We're stepping into restored relationships. We're stepping into restore relationships. Oh, we're breaking every curse. We're breaking every curse. We're breaking every curse. We're breaking every curse that the enemy has wanted. Every label, every name, every origin. In the name, I feel. In this place, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. We're stepping into destiny, stepping into destiny, stepping into healing, stepping into deliverance. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. just say this to you this is what we call a moment just like blind Bartimaeus when he heard that Jesus was passing by if he had remained quiet then he would have remained blind but this is the Lord reaching out to some people here today and do not as I always say do not let your pride get in the way of your blessing here today if you are here today you need to be at this altar because God has ministered to you. I want you to come out of your seat. We just want to take a season and just pray with you, pray over you. It's not us. It's going to be God who's going to do the work in you. But come on. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, okay, how long you've been serving the Lord. But this is the moment. Do not let this moment pass you by. Do not let this moment pass you by. I'm going to wait for you. I'm going to wait for you. I'm going to wait for you right now. Yes, just keep on coming. Just come. That's right. Come. Just come. Just come. Just come. We're going to fill the altars. Just come. Just come. Hallelujah, Lord. Spirit of God, have your way. Have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Touch every heart, every mind, oh God. You bring them, Lord. You bring them, oh God. You bring them, Lord. You bring them. Mario, come. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless your name. Come on, everybody, lift your hands. Hallelujah, Spirit of God. Spirit of God, have your way right now, God. 
Do what needs to be done in our hearts and in our minds, oh God. Transform us from the inside out, God. It's not how we started, it's how we're going to end. Lord, this is what we believe, that you who began a good work, you will be faithful to complete this work, oh God. It doesn't matter what's going on now, Lord. Your word declares all things will work together for our good and for your glory, God. There's no good thing that you'll withhold from us, Lord. Thank you for building character and this perseverance, God. You're teaching us how to trust you. As Pastor Daniel said, the level of our relationship causes us to trust you. No matter how we see things, Lord, we know in whose hand we belong, oh God. And Lord, we say like the Apostle Paul today, we are persuaded that you are able. We are persuaded that you are able. We are persuaded that you are able. We're not going to go by the winds and the waves. Our eyes are on you, Jesus. Even as we sing that you are the center of it all, we declare you are the center of it all, oh God. We're trusted in your power, oh God. We're trusted in your grace. We're trusted in your mercy. Jesus, you are the good shepherd. Lead us by your steady hand, oh God. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for you are with us, oh God. You're leading us to pass of righteousness, oh God. You're leading us to the green pastures, oh God. What you said about us will come to pass, for you are a God who keeps his word. Every promise of God is still yes and amen and in Christ Jesus. So we stand on the authority of your word. But right now, God, break those mindsets, oh God. Break those lies, oh God, from the enemy, oh God. Flush it out right now. You, the Holy Spirit, you're the spirit of fire. Burn whatever needs to be burned out of the minds, oh God. Lord, whatever is a lie, take it out. Replace it with your word, which is truth, oh God. For they are able, for they will do it. It can be done. It shall be done because you said it will be done, oh God. Be faithful to your word, God. We're not asking you to be faithful to our wants. We're saying be faithful to your word, God. It's not our wants, oh God, that you're bound by. It's your word that you're bound by, God. And so whatever word you've spoken to them, Lord, we believe it will be done. And God, while this is an emotional time, it's a time of crying, it's a time of bending over, it's a moment, God. But Lord, this emotional moment will lead to a transformation in our lives because again, Lord, it's not in the, it's, it's not in the emotion that we're getting caught up with. It's in you that we're being caught up with. We've heard your word. We know your word is true. We know you're the God who does not change. What you've done for one, you will do for another. But we're not an immigrant. We're not a foreigner. We're not a slave because whom the son says free is free indeed. We are your sons and your daughters in Christ Jesus. We are citizens of heaven. So Lord, you belong to us and we belong to you. You will do the very thing that you say you would do, oh God. We stand on your word today, 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 God. I thank you, Lord. 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 Even now, Spirit of God, water, water the seed of your word in our hearts here today. Because when we leave this place, the enemy is going to say, what was all that noise? What was all that shouting for? But we learn your word when they shout, it's because victory is near. And so we're shouting because we know victory is here. Not victory is near, but victory is here. Is there anybody who believes that today? Come on, let's put our hands together and say amen. Victory is here. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for every home that's going to be different now, God. Every husband, every wife, every child, God. I thank you that on the job, the people are going to see a difference in them, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for them trying again, Lord, trying again and trying again. They're like, they're going to be like, oh, God, like naming God. They're going to keep dipping until they're clean again, God. They're never going to stop, oh, Lord, until what you said that will happen will happen, Lord. So we thank you today, Lord. Thank you for this word you put in your servant's heart. Pastor Emily, come up here with your husband, please. Pastor Maurice, come, please. Cassandra, get around. Emily, Bernadette, would you get around? I need some sisters around Emily, some brothers around Pastor Daniel. Look at me for a second. We prayed for ourselves. We prayed for the people at the altar. He said something, I don't know, if it, I think it was this morning. He said, you know, 
this is not like a poor us moment. That's not why I'm saying this. But he said it this morning. You know, being a pastor can be very lonely. It can be very lonely when you're going through trials, especially because, you know, as leaders, you're called to lead. And many times you're afraid to look weak, although it's in our weakness that his strength is perfected. But sometimes people don't, they can't handle that. But I got to tell you, and I say this respectfully to both of you. I say this honestly, I should say. As I said to you in my office when I hugged you, brother, I love you both. I respect you both because I don't know that I would have been able to handle all that you guys have handled in the short period that I've known you. In the three, four years that we've known each other, you've moved like four times. And not any, not because of anything you've done, just because the enemy has just used the different situations to try to distract you. But through it all, you have been faithful. And the same way you preach this message about Hagar and that God is the God who sees her, the God that that same God sees you today. And that same God who provided for her is going to provide for you, your family, your church. The gathering place will be a place where many will gather, young and old, black and white, from different ethnicities, but many will gather in that place. And just as it was on the day of Pentecost, and they saw all these different people who were calling on the name of the Lord, speaking in tongues, and it drew people to faith in Christ Jesus. That's what I believe God's going to do in the gathering place. Would you just all stand if you're physically able, and would you stretch forth your right hand? And come on, let's believe that God's going to open up a door, a place that they can call home. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we just worship you right now, God. Father, we thank you, God, that we can come boldly to your throne room, my God. We thank you, God, that we can carry every weight, every petition, God, every care, and just lay it at your feet, God. And Father God, that's what we do right now, God. Father God, we lift this church up to you, God. We lift this pastor and his wife up to you, God. And we ask you, God, to move on their behalf, my God. God, you said that you are the one, God, that will accomplish the work that you have started in them, my God. You didn't start something for it to stop, my God, but you have a plan, God, that it will continue on and on, God, and accomplish everything, God, that you have said it will accomplish. So, Father God, we lean back on you, God, knowing, God, that when we are in a situation, God, you are the one that's going to bring us out my God so father we pray God that you will provide that permanent place God for this ministry God plant them God where you want them to be my God let them be planted and rooted God in that community God so much so God that it grows and flourishes and becomes what you want it to become my God father we thank you for their faithfulness God we thank you for their love for your people my God now God you do it my God 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 you don't do it it won't be done God so, Father, we lean back on you, God, knowing, God, that you would do it, God. Now, Father, we thank you for that new edifice, God. We thank you, God, for the volunteers that's going to come and help them, my God. We thank you for the financial blessings that's going to flow, God, into this ministry, God. We thank you, God, that everything that is needed, you will provide, my God. God, we worship you. Come on, put your hands together and thank God. God, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Good. Come on. Oh, you are good. Everyone stand. Good. Oh, One more time. You are good. Good. Oh, you are good. Good. Oh. How many say amen today? Amen. And the word that came to my heart is no more tabernacle. God's going to give you a temple. God's going to give you a temple. The tabernacle, they moved about, but the temple is home. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for being. It's good to pray one for another. We're in the house of God. Amen. We're believing for the breakthroughs that are here, believing for the gathering place. How many appreciated that word from Pastor Daniel? Can we put our hands together and thank God for him? Amen.